everyone. Welcome to our church. And when we say church, it doesn't always mean the building. It means the place in our hearts. The church is wherever we are. And we welcome all of you out there who are visitors. We welcome all of you out there who have been looking for a home, for a place to fit, a place to express your opinions and not worry that others may believe different things. We welcome you here to this space where we have come to call home. This church rest on the lands that were cared for by the Peoria tribes. We try in the ways that we know how to honor the land as they did. Welcome to this time when we are together and when we say to ourselves, I love this congregation. I love this place we call home. And I echo Reverend Linda's words and again extend a welcome to all of you. Next week will be our annual flower communion and we're asking you to send in photos or take pictures of your favorite flowers. We will use them on the service. You can send them to minister at Peoria UU Church Dot org. We continue to provide many ways for you to connect this, this coming week. Wednesday at 7 p.m., Joys and Sorrows. Thursday, continuation of our adult RE of the reading of the book, uh, Semiosis. And Friday morning, bring your muffins, bring your coffee, and bring your smile to at 9.30 to muffin chat with the ministers. We also invite you to um, think about registering to be uh, to go to GA this year. It will 100% be virtual and the fee is $150. Information went out this week in the builder, but if you have any other questions about it, you can either contact myself or the Reverend Linda White. If you haven't filled out your pledge form, we are asking you to do so. Uh, we appreciate those who have pledged and we still have a little ways to go. We're about 70% of our goal, but we thank you for pledging and making a commitment to this church. In our connection to reaching out to members who were once here but have moved away, uh, we have another surprise for you of a dear member that was here and is now living in Santa Fe. Good morning. I'm Nancy Luchens, and I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The words this morning are by Arlene Goff. Thresholds, we cross them every day, from room to room, from outside to inside, and back again, from here to there, from anywhere to everywhere from age to age. Each threshold offers an opportunity for change and renewal, for transformation from what we were and what we are to what can be. In this hour and in this place, we cross a threshold from our day-to-day -day everydayness into space and time attuned to the other, into the sacred, to the holy, into an awareness of new life pregnant with possibilities. How will we be renewed in this moment? How will we be changed in this hour? How will we be transformed through the gathering of beloved community? Come, you longing, thirsty souls. Come, let us worship together.
And now we'll hear from Terry Malone, who will talk about what the church means to her. And after that, some special music from our own Natasha Green. Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Malone, and I'm speaking to you today as a member of the annual campaign Pledge Drive team. So here we are, truly at the dawn of a new day. And what a historic day it is. We are welcoming our new settled minister, Reverend Jennifer Innes, and our first female minister, yay, so exciting. We are living through a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. We are learning new ways to worship, to share, to collaborate, learning new ways to do everything really. We are learning how to have church without a building, without choir, without gatherings, without potlucks, without our wonderful parties and holidays. We have learned to do without a lot. But one thing we cannot do without is adequate pledges. Our financial challenges at this point are historic. Remember, our pledges support 80% of our church budget, 80%. So how are we doing on our pledge drive? Well, we are almost 75% there. That still leaves quite a chunk to go. If we don't meet our goal, we will simply have to cut programs. And cutting programs always impacts people. So where will we cut? Staff and salaries? Religious education? Choir? Snack pack? Or community support that we offer through programs like Loaves and Fish or Environmental Justice? Where would we cut? So I encourage you to carefully consider how you can do your part this year. Perhaps you have already pledged, and if so, maybe you could even do a little bit more. Perhaps one of the programs that I mentioned is a personal passion of yours. Could you reach a little farther? We are such giving people. Let's mark this year of historic challenge as one of historic UU spirit of generosity. Thank you so much.
is a time in the service when we do a chalice lighting, and I will say that I couldn't find one that I really liked, so I wrote one. A flame casts both light and shadow into the world, and we choose that which beckons us. For good or in fear, we approach the edge of mystery, the threshold of possibility, or the depths of love. It is all light and shadow. And now we will go to Time for All Ages with Amy Pop, our Director of Religious Education. Good morning. I hope everyone is staying well, body and soul. As we stand in the threshold between our past way of life and our unknown way of life in the future, some of you might be feeling a little bit worried. I want you to know that that is absolutely normal. I also want you to know that it's going to be okay. We just need to help and trust in each other along the way. Today's story is about just that. It is called The Stream. High in the far off mountains, a little stream sprang from its hidden source. It flowed down the mountainside, sometimes leaping and bubbling, sometimes drifting lazily or going underground, but it was never stopped by any obstacle that may have gotten in its way. Finally, one day, it reached the sands of a huge desert. Just as it had crossed every other obstacle, the stream tried to flow across the sand, but no matter how fast it ran into the sand, its waters disappeared. It was convinced its destiny was to cross the desert, and yet there appeared to be no way to do so. And then it heard a murmuring from the desert itself, a whisper. As the wind can cross the desert, so can the stream. The stream replied that it was flowing into the sand and only being swallowed, but the wind could fly, and this is why it could cross the desert. By trusting your usual ways, the sand said, you will never get across. You must let the wind carry you across the desert by allowing yourself to be absorbed by the wind. Now, the stream didn't like this idea. It had never been absorbed before, and it didn't want to lose its individuality because if it lost it, it might not get it back. Trust me. This is simply what the wind does, said the sand. If you let yourself be absorbed by the wind, it will carry you across the desert and let you fall on the other side to be a stream again. The stream asked nervously if it would be the same stream that it was today. No, you will not. But the real heart of you the real essence of who you are will be carried away and born again to flow a new course, to be a stream that you can't even imagine from where you look now. The stream thought for a while, and something deep in its heart remembered a wind that could be trusted and a horizon that was just out of reach, but was always a new beginning. So... The stream took a deep breath and surrendered to the power of the wind. The wind raised up the moisture of the little stream and carried it safely high above the hot desert sand and let it fall again softly on the top of a new mountain far away. And the stream began to more deeply understand who it really was and what it really meant to be. So, just like the little stream, if we trust in each other and ourselves and help carry each other, we will reach the other side of this desert, wiser, stronger, and more whole, both as individuals and 
as a beloved community. So be it. And now is the time in our service where we invite you at home to think of a joy, a sorrow, and write those down and send them in to us or share them on Wednesday evening. But today we'd like to light candles for all our joys that are happening, for the joy of being able to still to be able to connect online, and be able to stay in touch with one another during these difficult times. We have some sorrows. Barbara Ryan's husband, Bob Ryan, passed away. A memorial service is still being determined. And as we mentioned last week, Anne Growley's mother passed away. And I'm sure she would appreciate any cards or letters, emails, um, just acknowledging that. And now I invite you to listen to this meditation written by Lisa Doyage, entitled Hallowed Ground and Hearthstone. I might remove my shoes because this is hallowed ground, the guide says, a holy place, not an everyday life place. The guide tells us how we think or know it was one and not the other for those people a millennia ago. But aren't the places where we live holy ground? Don't our very acts of feeding one another, healing one another, singing to one another, teaching one another, dancing together and weeping together, hallow the places where we live? This is an early morning image, the guide says, spitzering it with water so we can see it on a cloudy afternoon. Shifting light through the hours and the seasons reveal different images. Isn't that the way it is with the images of our lives? That the signs and symbols, events, and turning points and decisions, telling the stories of our days and years, come into clarity and fade again through cycles of light and dark. Seasons of birth and growth, hibernation, and death. This stone is hard, the guide says, harder than granite. So hard that the snows and rains and winds of thousands of years have not erased marks left by glaciers of the last ice age. Yet the buffalo wore one tall rock smooth, rubbing away their irritations against it till it shone like glass. Isn't even this the way of our lives? That flesh and blood can find relief in rough places. That irritants can polish us. That hard will sometimes yield to soft after countless repeated encounters. Let us now enter into a quiet moment of meditation. Our offering today come from our offering words come from the Victoria Weinstein entitled The Offering as Pastoral Ministry. Every week in our church we take up an offering. It's good to remind ourselves from time to time that the offering is symbolic as well as practical. We know that it's through pledges that we build our budget and fund our yearly programs and ministries of worship and religious education, pay our staff, professional religious leaders, and finance the comfort and beauty of our building. And we know we could easily submit those pledges, checks to the church at any convenient time. But we take an offering during our worship service to make a community expression of thanks for the blessings of abundance, 
to visibly bring in the harvest at this most treasured hour of the week. Our offering says that the act of giving is essential to our spiritual well-being as anything else we do here. This morning, offering will now be given and received in a spirit of grateful fellowship. And how can you make an offering today? This can be done by way of sending in a check, going to our website, make a financial pledge and hit the donate button, or texting by calling 833-484-0328 and wait for the prompt and follow the instructions. We thank you for your donations. Thresholds, brinks, barriers, boundaries, edges. Where are we? Emerging or divesting as we move through these endless days. We are on a journey, even as most of us sit at home wondering, when will we get back to our lives, our real lives? A very special scholar, John O'Donohue, has this to say. At any time, you can ask yourself, at which threshold am I now standing? At this time in my life, what am I leaving? Where am I about to enter? What is preventing me from crossing my next threshold? What gift would enable me to do it? A threshold is not a simple boundary, it's a frontier that divides two different territories, rhythms and atmospheres. Indeed, it is a lovely testimony to the fullness and integrity of an experience or a stage of life that it intensifies toward the end into a real frontier that cannot be crossed without the heart being passionately engaged and woken up. At this threshold, a great complexity of emotions comes alive. Confusion, fear, excitement, sadness, and hope. This is one of the reasons such vital crossings were always clothed in ritual. It is wise in our own life to be able to recognize and acknowledge the key thresholds, to take our time, to feel all the varieties of presence that accrue there, to listen inward with complete attention until you hear the inner voice calling you forward. That was John O'Donohue. So what is your inner voice saying to you? Maybe we hear more questions than answers. We wonder if we are in a sci-fi movie because this thing we are going through can't possibly be real. In fact, some people are in so much denial that they are rebelling against the protective measures that would help contain COVID-19. It's hard times we're living through, and yet we are on the dawn of a new day. How are we facing it? Admittedly, some of us are doing better than others. This sheltering in place thing takes skills. It takes skills that you already have. Oh, like what, you might ask? Your beating heart and wholesome breath. To continue to exist through this nerve-wracking, difficult time takes skills that you've been practicing all your lives. Take some deep breaths. Take some deep breaths when you are anxious. Take a really long, deep breath when you are about to lose your temper or say something you can't take back or before you raise your hand to your child or a family member. Count to 10 or 20 if necessary. Or count breaths all day if that's what it takes to save your relationships. You have your hearing and sight, your senses. 
though these attributes may have dimmed or even been lost for many of us to some degree we still use our senses to listen as we learn new things about how to keep on keeping on we see through the news what is happening around the world we see tragedy in a hurting world we see bravery from people who never imagined they were signed up to be our heroes we see brutality and ignorance and our hearts break but we will take our broken hearts and not only grieve but we will also work to mend those places where marginalized people have been ignored or mistreated your tears and heartbreak are useless unless you find ways to interrupt oppression hate mongering and fear we will be the invisible heroes and healers who do donate to just causes who find ways to feed the hungry who demand equity in health care we will be our best selves we will be on the watch for injustice we will witness we will work because we know that the act of witnessing is not passive and that it is not complete until we take action i want to revisit a topic i preached about a number of years ago and that is prayer for some it is more palpable palatable to say thoughts or wishes as in i'm thinking of you keeping you in my thoughts i contend that these are kinds of prayers no matter what you call them and i would be willing to call them something different if someone offered another word that fits people who don't consider themselves religious often consider themselves spiritual and they may disavow that their entreaties are directed toward any kind of being i agree that involvement with the spirit god or deity of any kind is not necessarily important when we pray or meditate i think maybe most agnostics and atheists would claim that they don't pray but i have some definitions of my own that may bring you and them into the circle of prayers there's a book called how do you spell god answers to the big questions from around the world an interdenominational project by rabbi mark gelman and monsignor thomas harton listen to what they have to say about prayer the reason all religions have prayers or chants or meditations is that all human beings need to say four things in their lives those four things that all people need to say are thanks wow gimme oops and in the in the book each one of those words is followed by an exclamation point and if you're really good you can get all four elements into one prayer dear lord or spirit or earth i love you wow and know you love me thanks even though i am not worthy oops ps if it isn't asking too much could you please help the cubs when the pennant amen that's a gimme and the cubs did win so prayer works i contend that if all people need to say thanks while well, giving me and oops then prayer is something all people do all people it is nothing to do with being religious or spiritual or addressing a deity it's part of being human and in this time of desperate measures we need to remember our humanity because we are moving closer and closer as a nation to acts of greed cynicism and narcissism that bring us to the brink of self-destruction and finally 
We need imagination. What kind of world can you imagine as we come out of this virus situation? Can you imagine peoples of the world joining together in concert for good? Can you imagine that we will now really work toward better environment? Can you imagine what it would be like for us all to be together at the same level of health care, of work, of doing good works. Can you imagine that world? I think you can because I know you've done it at times in your lives. And I think this is the time when we all need to imagine. When we all need to use our senses, our hearts, to step over the barriers, to come to the threshold, to come to the brink and to the joy of what our lives can be. May it be so. And now our closing hymn, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. Now, last week, I asked you to get up and dance. This week, I asked you to clap. Clap along, clap along, open your hearts.
Closing words by Andrew Pakula. As you prepare to leave this sacred space, pack away a piece of this church in your heart. Wrap it carefully like a precious gem. Carry it with you through the joys and sorrows of your days. Let its gentle glow strengthen you, warm you, remind you of all that is good and true. Until we gather here again in this place of love. Amen. And now, um, just have a couple of special announcements. Uh, this past week, our president of the UUA Association, Pre President Susan Frederick Gray, put out an announcement and advisement to all congregations advising us to prepare for possibly um, not coming together until May of 2021. So many people, as we move forward, we are now placed with the challenge of how can we continue to gather together and to do church. And as you move forward with this, uh, we are putting together a task force that will be meeting this week to begin to put together some ideas. But now on a happy announcement, you know, I have had the privilege of this past year and a half of working with the Reverend Linda White. And I got to thinking, thanks to her, our relationship has been more than assistant minister to the senior minister. It has truly been a partnership. And so I'm pleased to announce that from this day forward, Reverend Linda White will be known as the associate minister of a Unitarian Universalist Church of Peoria. And this was a recommendation I made to the board and the board approved. And so we're going to present to you, Linda, this certificate in recognition of your valuable contributions. We recognize you as Associate Minister, Universalist Unitarian Church, Peoria, Illinois. Thank you. Thank you and so it's much. Very notable because when I think of Linda, I think of us as a team. She has truly been my associate, and we have truly worshiped and worked together as one team. So thank you. Now join us in a few more minutes for coffee hour. <laughs> wow.